I want to remind you about the things that we spoke about in class, um, especially regarding relationships and referential integrity. This is the employee large database, and it has three tables, the employees, locations, and titles. I'll remind you of the data. We have 11 locations, and we have just four titles. The titles are going to be title one, two, three, or four. And the locations are L01, actually there's zero, L02, L03, like that. And each of these employees um, will be assigned a title and a location. Now notice right now there is no field for that. So I'm going to go into design view and I'm going to say that the besides keeping track of a name, a gender, salary and our performance, we want to keep track of the location. And I'm going to make it a foreign key, so it's going to have um, the ID and on the name of the uh, field name, and also their title ID. Now I'm making these both text fields, um, data types, and it's actually very important that the data type of a foreign key matches or is compatible with the primary key it's going to be related to. So I could check both those tables. I'm going to close and save this table. I'll open the locations table in design view and I will look at the data type for location ID and indeed it's text and I happen to know that the title tables uh, primary key is also text so I'm okay. I'm ready to establish the relationships now between my tables. I'm going to go to database tools and relationships. Now here are my three tables. If my tables weren't already showing up on the grid I could click show table, select the tables I want to add and then click add and close the dialog box. I'm going to push the employees table to the center. It makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So here is title ID and here's the foreign key that I created in the employees table to make that relationship. I'm going to drag from one to the other and enforce referential integrity. And I'm going to do the same with location ID. I'm going to drop it right on top of location ID. Notice it's the point of my arrow that is what determines what I'm pointing at. So enforcing referential integrity created t two relationships, one to many, one to many. So one title will be had by many employees. Many employees will have the same one title. One location will have many employees. Many employees will work at one location. You could also say one record in the location table will relate to many records in the employee table. One record in the titles table will relate to many employees in the employees table. So many records in here to one record in here. I'm going to close and save. Well, I'm back in this database and each one of my employees has been assigned a location and a title. And now when we open up either one of those tables that is used on the one side of the relationship, you'll see a plus sign next to the primary key. If I want to know who's working in Boston, I can click that plus sign and I will see a subtable, a, a data sheet that is only the employees working in Boston. Same goes for any city. I can also open up the titles table and see what are the names of my trainees and they will open underneath here as a sub data sheet. The plus signs will not be visible unless the relationships are established with referential integrity. And um, again, one location will have many employees, one title will be shared by many employees and that's what we uh, established by creating these two foreign keys. Notice that each one of the tables has a primary key. Sometimes a primary key is used in a relationship the way this one is and this one is, and sometimes it's not. 
there's an employee ID primary key. It is not being used in a relationship, but it's still there. Every table gets a primary key, and the point of the primary key is to hold unique data.